So you've also been the, one of the, the core maintainers of Marco.js, and Marco is a very fascinating framework that I felt was very ahead of his time too. I actually talked to Patrick back in 2016, 2017, maybe. I don't remember exactly when. So Marco was made at eBay. That's my understanding. And they were using it. And it had all these like incredible features that like, I remember trying to do the server-side rendering story for frameworks like React and, and Vue and everything used to be not great. And there was like no streaming server-side rendering in particular. It was like all blocking for basically all modern frameworks or modern at the time. And I remember like Marco had a really elegant solution to this, like way before other teams were like really being able to get to it. So I'm, I'm interested to hear about the story of like how you started working on that and how it shaped your thoughts on Solid too. Yeah, definitely. Marco has been a huge influence. And Marco, I couldn't believe it when I was when it was shown to me that, that this existed. It actually, the story with Marco actually picks up almost right after what we were just talking about. I, I started writing articles on Medium and I was doing performance testing on components. But the bigger implication of the work that I was doing with Solid was that component model doesn't have to be the update model. Um, basically, yes, you write your code as components. It helps you modularize. You get all the benefits from code organization you get from something like React. You have these reusable pieces, but there's no need to say when you update some state that the component and all the components underneath it all have to re-render. And what was important about this is as I was testing these extreme kind of more benchmark testing things, looking at the real cost of components, when I called it, I came to the conclusion that in a lot of frameworks, components were pure overhead. A lot of classically, a lot of reactive frameworks made components really expensive. They made them like an interfacing point where it was doing all the like reactivity was resolving. And well, the coolest thing about a virtual bomb is that you can just call the function over and over again. And there's, there's cost, but it's not as much. And I borrowed that concept from React also because I used web components at the time. So when I introduced my own component model in solid, it was very lightweight. I was like, oh, if people want like the thing, they'll use web components. Over time, my benchmarking, I was like, oh, actually I just don't need or want the web components. But essentially this basis meant that I, I was looking at how to do these little pinpoint updates and ways of keeping the code really small and efficient without this kind of overhead of components, but with the DX of it. And this was actually very interesting to the Marco team. They actually found me through my Medium articles because I was writing these like concepts, looking at these benchmarks. And by that point, Patrick had moved on from eBay and the team had, was in the middle of doing a big migration from Marco 3 to Marco 4. And essentially they saw that the work of getting rid of the components and using this fine grain reactivity also applied to the problem of hydration. They were actually the first ones to see it. They realized that if you had this knowledge of the graph of what data updates what data, you could tree shake away all the other code. Like it doesn't need to come to the client. Marco was popular, although I didn't understand it at the time um, for uh, inventing a concept these days known as islands, where you essentially have client only components sitting inside this server tree. Um, server components are actually a similar concept as well. Um, and this allowed them to ship a lot less JavaScript for mostly static things. If you look at a site like eBay, there are interactivity points. It's a card, buy buttons, these, these parts, but there's also a lot of just static markup. And it's really important for eBay to get good SEO, to have stuff come in very performant at load time. They needed to reduce JavaScript. And the reason there was because they had written their old backends in Java and they knew they wanted to move fast and do modern stuff to move to JavaScript. And because performance is so important, they basically couldn't make that move unless they could show that a JavaScript web sorry, web server could be as performant as the Java one. And that was pretty steep. They had to work really hard to come up with technology approaches that we haven't seen. They had their own bundler called Lasso at the time, which basically was doing dynamic on the fly bundling, both in dev and prod. It's funny, we haven't seen that actually again until Veep came out. There was like a, between Lasso in 2014 and Veep in around 2020, like the whole web package was not that. And they had these islands and then they also, the other key was out of order and in order streaming. They had to be able to send the HTML down as it was ready. So the, basically if you have, you're talking to like dozens of different services, you can't have the slowest service on the page slow down the whole 
page for rendering. This is not a new technique. We've been able to do this kind of chunked encoding since 97, I think. And it's funny because frameworks have always, even on the back end, played around with it, but maybe not embraced it in the same way. Like big companies definitely, but as like a base feature, when you go pick up PHP or Rails, they're not like, here's your other order streaming. And Marco team in solving this really inspired by actually Facebook of all places. They had something called Big Pipe. And this was this way of streaming in assets and streaming in the views and stuff for all these different services and weaving them together. It might sound a bit like microservices to you, but it's it's not necessarily about microservices. It's about understanding that parts of the page, part of the assets um, can be loaded in, streamed in as they're ready. And this means that your long tail gets a lot better. Like you don't have this problem of the whole thing getting blocked. And Marco was such a framework and they released it open source, which is even crazier. 2014, 2015, like the think that these are the features that we got really excited about in 2021. Marco had it back in 2014. Of course, I didn't know this. When I started talking to the guys in 2019, and they were, I didn't even realize they were looking at hiring me at the time. I was just chatting shop, talking frameworks and stuff. They showed me Marco and I just, my, my jaw dropped. I was just like, well, is this possible? And like the streaming and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I already knew I was in a place where SSR was going to be important. Like it was very clear at that point. I actually pushed back solid 1.0's release until I was confident that there would be a good SSR solution. So I was ready to push, pull the trigger and release solid 1.0 in 2019, but I didn't because I was like, I want to make sure the APIs and stuff are right. Cause I saw Marco and I was just like, you know, like some people talk about like being nerd sniped. I was just like, this is incredible. How, like, how does no one know about this? In any case, it was an amazing opportunity. They offered me a job to work on the team, relocate to San Jose. I'm a Canadian um, from Vancouver. So it was like a whole different thing. I left my startup and ended up working for big tech in California and complete life change. And it was incredible the amount of stuff learning, seeing how the performance mattered at scale for these kind of companies. Like, cause we'd have product teams coming. This is my first time on the other side. Cause like I was a product guy. I was a product lead. I, I delivered products and being on like the platform side, you suddenly have all the product teams, you know, blaming you for every possible thing that they end up doing wrong or you, like support efforts were huge. You can understand how stuff, you know, takes forever in these environments, why they have so many developers. But the Marco team was actually, when I joined, I was the third member. So supporting basically all of eBay, it was a lot. There was also a team that did UI and components that we worked adjacent with, but the, the, this was not a big team. And it, it was an interesting time because a lot of like contractors, new people coming in were like, why can't we use React? And it's React is would not be suitable. We wouldn't be able to keep our performance. So there was a lot of resentment against Mar Marco, not from the people who've been there for a while, but, and people understood, but from these contracts, people coming in, it was an interesting balance. And the leadership had sh shifted around when I joined in 2020, there was some kind of scandal. I don't know the details, but the CEO of eBay was replaced. It was an interesting time because what the team needed, well, funnily enough, even though I got I joined for a technical reason was that they needed someone to go to bat and make sure that people understood the importance. So I actually worked a lot on education and training materials, which are also spreading the word out to the wider ecosystem because Marco had these crazy concepts, things like async fragments that they introduced, which are, these days we call that suspense. Like it, it was like almost a decade ahead of its time and it was available in the open source and no one had, had any clue. And I, I started realizing, looking at this, that there's a lot of technologies out there in open source that have that kind of potential but they just aren't popular. So no one knows about them and sure they might eventually get adopted in part and stuff, but can you picture being able to build your site, have this kind of power at your fingertips, like a decade before it becomes semi-common practice? Like it's a complete game changer if that mattered for you. And it just inspired me to do more. I took that learning from how to do server stuff and applied it to solid. So solid did, did eventually 1.0 in 2021. I started working on solid start, which is a meta framework for solid also pulling in that server side rendering knowledge. But yeah, Mar Marco is in incredible. We'd been working on the next version of it, which is not out yet, which I told everyone I stopped talking about it until it came out. It's just, it's really hard when you're sitting on a technology that seems so incredible. Mar the, that fine grained signals based stuff that I was working on, what inspired the work for the next version of Marco is it hasn't been released, but it actually got released by another framework first called Quick, which essentially is resumability. We realized that this technology doing the fine-grained signals with this kind of hyper 
narrow hydration and uh, compiler analysis would allow us to ship even less JavaScript run less. It's crazy. This was the first time ever that I'd seen taking a very interactive app, something like a to, to do MVC, something where you're like clicking on every possible interactive, like a simple demo. And it actually gets smaller when you SSR. It makes sense. You're like, oh yeah, you're offloading more to this server, but like how much can you offload to the server when you have a counter and buttons and rows that need the change and toggled state and all this stuff, how much can you offload to the server? As it turns out more than you would think. And in most SSR, that isn't the case. Uh, when you add server rendering, your JavaScript gets larger, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, Marco was really important for the development, uh, at least in solid. It's just understanding that we were nowhere near where we need to be. There's just, it, there's, there's a lot of places in space in this, I don't know, call it like in this kind of front end zone that is still left to be explored. Why do you think Marco never caught on? It's so far ahead of its time for so long. It, it's sad that it never got a wider appeal. Yeah, there's a couple of things. Patrick left, which is hard when you have frameworks. If eBay pushed the same way, maybe Meta pushed, it might've been a bit different. But the, when you, the primary author leaves, like what would have happened to Svelte if Rich Harris left before Svelte 3 came out? Or I'm, I'm not sure. It's tricky. The other thing is Marco was a bit extreme on his templating. If we want to talk about pioneering or being innovative, again, they had single file components, but they also really heavily used um, their compilation in terms of special templating syntax. Because um, Marco viewed themselves as like an HTML plus kind of scenario. It's funny. These days, I think it would be much more accepted, so to speak. But we're talking, again, Svelte 3 kind of brought compiler to the masses. Marco was doing this back in, I'd say Marco 3 on 2015 onwards. So about four years before Svelte and, sorry, sorry, Svelte 3. And like people were just not ready. Like the syntax, they'd see something in it. People are very sensitive to that. It was there for mechanical reasons for compiler analysis, but yeah. I think it was just a weird zone. And we're talking about a time period when everyone was talking about single page apps. So when Marco, I even hit this in 2019, 2020, you talk to people, Marco, you'd be like, oh, here, check out this framework. And they're like, okay, what's the go-to state management? Um, and it's whatever you want. State management isn't really the focus, but I guess you could pull state management. Okay, how about the router? And we're like, there is no router. And you're like, what? It's because it's an MPA framework like Astro. You don't need a router. And also the conception is, oh, MPA, like that old stuff. You full page reloads, like for the type of things that you want fast page loads, th that is fine. When you're loading product pages, you can Google search results. But yeah, if you're building a highly interactive app, you probably don't want to reload the page. The thing is browsers have gone better over time and the streaming made it very obvious. It's very cool that with an MPA, you could be on a page, click on the next page and the quick stuff like the shell could load almost immediately, almost like a CDN, and then the content could stream in and you'd see the loading indicators. So the difference between a single page app and MPA in those zones didn't feel as big because you just switch the page, the stuff, they paint hold until like content's available. So it would, the browser would paint hold. Then you'd see the header almost immediately again. So there's no flicker of white and the loading state. It looks pretty interactive. We've been sold for quite a while that client side rendering was the end all be all. And I, don't get me wrong, there's a huge benefit to it, but it's just like, there's enough things that made it different than everything else at the time. And yeah, I don't know. It's one of those interesting things because similarly, I don't know how the mentality changed so quickly in 2020 where people were like suddenly okay with it when Astro or Fresh came out or why people with server component stuff, like why did this model suddenly come back and people accept it? I think it was because of COVID and e-commerce and increased buying. There's this whole interesting time period where everyone thought that they could like make money on e-commerce and interest rates were low. So they shuffled a bunch of monies into companies that were selling products and they would build their frameworks. Uh, I, I could give lots of examples of that, but if you look at the meta framework movement of 2020 between what Next.js or Remix, and you start thinking about how companies have been instrumental in pushing this kind of mentality in terms of, you start understanding maybe that's why, but. At the time, Marco was like the thing that no one thought they needed. You sandwiched between backend developers who were like, why do I want this JavaScript stuff? And then front ends that were like, oh, you don't have the latest Hawk approach to state management. It's, it wasn't fashionable.